Last time on Techno Hobo Adventures. First day hitchhiking right here. Let's see how long it takes to get picked up. Now that I'm here at this truck stop, I need to get past Kansas City. The one thing I have going for me right now is that there's a lot of traffic through this area, so... Yeah, so what I said about uh, there being more traffic through this area, that turned out to be completely false. So yeah, I'm stuck out here in the middle of the night. I was sleeping in there and then the manager came over and said you can't sleep. You can be in here but you can't sleep. Uh, I got picked up by a cop and uh, he dropped me off in Bonner Springs. I was on the buses for three hours, three and a half hours. And I made it all the way to Independence, east towards St. Louis. That's where I'm trying to get. Well, last night was cold. Yeah, hopefully I can get out of here today so I don't have to sleep there again. And just like that, I'm in St. Louis. I feel like I gotta keep my head on a swivel around here. Maybe I should just try and catch a bus out today. And so we resume our adventures south of St. Louis, headed towards Memphis. The first night went a little rough. Had an absolutely terrible night last night. Um, got down to like 37 degrees, I think. And um, was not fun. It's now a little bit warmer, so back on the road. So back on the road again, we got our first pickup of week two. Okay, got picked up. By a beautiful Romanian family. They said they were going to Memphis um, and then halfway through sort of decided they weren't. I don't know exactly what was going on because they were speaking Romanian but I tried to communicate with them through Google Translate as best I could. So now we are here um, which is a place. I'm not exactly sure where but it looks good for hitchhiking so not too mad about that. It's like halfway between Memphis and uh, St. Louis. I hitchhiked there for a little bit, but ultimately I had to stay the night. Well, I haven't been filming that much. Uh, mostly because it's been very cold outside. And I don't really want to film. And then when I get inside, I'm, you know, around people, so I don't want to film them either. Um, this is where I slept last night. I already packed up. I think I need to be showing more of that sort of thing. Uh, it's just usually too dark and then in the morning I just want to get out of there. But yeah, I definitely should be showing more of that. I'm sleeping with uh, a hat, two layers of coats, I have gloves on, it's just regular pants. But then I'm inside my tent, inside my sleeping bag. I don't think you can even see it, but my breath is visible. It's just been a little miserable. I can't wait to get further south. Luckily, that would be the last night in that kind of temperatures. I got another ride that day. All right, got picked up. Didn't get taken far. He's a real nice guy. Um, but he might, he said, uh, he dropped me off here and he said he's coming back in about 30 minutes. If I'm still there, go pick me back up. One hitchhike later. All right, got a ride from there. That guy didn't come back, but I got a different ride. And I'm now in, uh, he said it. He said it, but I don't remember. I don't remember where I am, but I'm just gonna keep heading south because it's not even noon yet. So maybe I'll break my record of most rides caught in one day and then on the third ride of the day i met one of the most significant people i'll probably meet on this trip i got picked up by dylan who's a fellow traveler he has a car and a dog uh he was a very cool guy we talked a lot and he offered to take me all the way down as far as florida almost uh i ended up declining but uh here's some of the highlights of that trip oh my god holy shit! There it is, Johnny Cash, Arkansas. We're in, I mean, middle of nowhere, Arkansas, basically. There you go, Johnny Cash. 
this place looks like Kansas. <laughs> I guess this is the R Kansas part. The Arkansas must be further west. There was copyrighted music playing during this part, so I'll just narrate it normally. We were crossing the, the Mississippi River and heading into Memphis, uh, where I was planning to get dropped off downtown. It was pretty exciting at the time, uh, but you'll see what happens in Memphis in just a minute. Downtown Memphis. Well, close to downtown anyway. I'm walking towards it right now. Um, honestly, pretty tired right now. Don't know that I'm all that uh, excited. Downtown Memphis coming right up. And there you right around downtown is totally empty. I got a bus to catch at 4:10. It is currently uh three something so i got a little bit yeah it's a city i don't know there's some cool stuff over here this is crazy so far memphis is a fucking dump i don't know if i just picked the wrong place to get dropped off but and this is not the good part, I'll tell you that. So I got up out of there in a hurry. Alright, back in the middle of fucking nowhere. Seems a little bit safer, maybe, hopefully. Still pretty, uh, you know, weird. I'm just gonna kinda huddle in this bush for a minute. And while I was huddled in that bush, I got a call from Dylan. He was getting in a hotel room instead of camping, and uh, he thought to call me and ask if I wanted to stay with him. I'm talking. So, what's that? Okay, fine. In three, two, one, no talking. Zip it. Hello? 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 Don't say anything you're gonna regret. And this here's Dylan. Howdy. Howdy, and we've been traveling together for like a day and a half. Uh, he picked me up uh, north of Memphis, like a couple hours north of Memphis. And uh, now we're down here just south, and he's gonna drop me off down uh, at the Walmart just south of here. And uh, we've been having a great time. He, he bought a hotel last night, he dropped me off, bought a hotel last night, and then thought to call me, or text me. Wow. And said, "Do you want to stay?" So you know, Memphis like, is such a place. It is. <laughs> it was probably going to be a rough night, but yeah, I appreciate it. So, all right, we're back at it. Hitchhiking again. Uh, this is a pretty big, wide interchange here. Plenty of space for people to stop if they need to. Uh, you know, I got some good, uh, good advice from Dylan and stuff. Uh, I feel like. It's giving me a little bit of hope that maybe this can make it the long term. So I left Dylan and uh, he was offering basically to take me, I mean I don't know if he would have let me stay all the way until Florida but he was certainly assuming like that. And um, and I said no and the reason is basically because the whole concept of this trip is that it's sort of, it's day by day, you know. I don't want to stay in the same place too long. I don't want to stay with the same person too long. You start to get, uh, you just start to get kind of settled into a routine when things are the same for too long. And uh, I don't want to do that. So, I mean, I hope I meet him again in the future. He's an awesome guy. But uh, for right now, I'm just going out on my own again. You know, it's a small world out there. I'm sure we'll meet again sometime. But for the time being, I had to find a spot to sleep. Just think about how there's like, there's gradations of spots to sleep, right? Because there's like the ideal spot, which is super hidden, easy to set up a tent, comfortable. You know, you could stay there for days or whatever and not have to worry about it. Then there's these spots that are like, you know, easy to get to. You're not gonna be found within a day, probably. Uh, easy to set up a tent in. That's great. 
And then it's like, what I've been thinking about right now is like, there are some spots that you really only want to go in after dark. And uh, I've been doing a lot of those back to back. And I don't really like it because you always feel like you're, you're trying to like hide away from people. So you like back in that corner there, that's good. But you basically have to go right past people's property. I'm just going to head over there. And like if it feels like I'm in people's backyards, I won't stay there. Well, it's hidden all right, but I don't know if I'm the only one out here. I think I saw, you definitely can't see it on camera, but I think I saw somebody over there. All right, well, I'd love to camp in some woods like this at some point. But I get the feeling now is not the time. So, yeah, this is that little stand of trees I was looking at earlier. And honestly, it does look pretty enticing. But I think the issue is you can still see straight through it. Now, see, here's a little micro spot. It's literally the same stand of trees, but there's this little, there's a field over here. There's a small road down there. There's the big road up there. I don't think I'm visible from either. There's no houses within like easy earshot. So this might be a type two. I think it's still possible for people to see me slash hear me. It's conceivable that someone could walk by, but this is about as good as it gets as far as positioning. So reveling in my ability to find good spots to sleep, I had a great night's sleep that night. And the next morning I headed off again. All right, so now I'm going to Tapello, and uh, I think I'm going to stay there for a little bit because there's a, uh, a music store I want to check out, and then apparently Elvis Presley's birthplace, which is going to be pretty sick. So next stop, Tapello. Oh, here we are in Tupelo. This is Elvis Presley's birthplace, apparently. I had no idea. I guess I didn't really know where he was from, but I thought it was further north. But apparently he was born Tupelo, Mississippi. Somehow, unintentionally, this trip has become a tour of famous musicians' birthplaces. Saw Johnny Cash earlier, and now Elvis Presley. Similar little shack. Here's a statue of Elvis Presley at age 13. He's got a guitar in his hand already. <laughs> Here's a statue. The little boy next to his older self, apparently. Some sort of time travel element to this museum. It's a nice story. So there you go. There's Elvis Presley. I'm not going to go inside the museum because I just don't really care that much but it's neat to be here you know never really thought about where Elvis might have been born and now I know now I can say I've been there uh, next stop is there's a music store I was looking at that I'm gonna go in and if I can find a cheap harmonica I'll probably buy it if not I'll just have a look around might be fun anyway yeah it's a little out of my price range I do want a mandolin at some point though. Dude. Look at those tubes. So cool. That is the exact model of practice amp that I sold before I uh, came out here. And just like that, I'm the owner of a new harmonica. I do not know how to play a harmonica, but I'm going to figure it out. And I think if I can learn it, I can start busking. I can start making some money on the side thing is I don't really like panhandling I don't like just asking for money for nothing so having a, an instrument even if I'm not great at it is at least something I think I'm gonna head down to that Dollar General now uh, and see if they have a can opener because I bought some tuna and I forgot to buy a can opener with it can opener acquired so with all the things I need acquired 
it was then time to get myself out of Tupelo. Well, it kind of seems like I've gotten myself into a pickle. Um, I probably would have been better off going to the the uh, intersection that I came in on, um, but I instead decided to walk all the way across town and then some to try and get to this other intersection that looks a little bit better because it has a truck stop. But I'm not sure it was worth it. Now it, it's looking like I'm going to have to cross over another minor highway to get there and there's no sidewalks in this town at all like I guess I'm gonna be sleeping in a one of them type 3 spots today this is uh, the first big rain I've had to deal with I think there's that one little sprinkle down in, in uh, Missouri but I think this one's worse and I was caught off guard by it I didn't think it was supposed to be rain today so I wasn't really set up at all. I had to panic and try and get the tarp up. I think I'm okay now, but there's still a chance that water seeps under the tent and stuff. Well, um, this is actually not a bad spot. Uh, aside from the fact that I can't really set up a full tent in here. I ended up taking down the poles and just throwing the tarp over everything. And uh, as you can see, everything's still kind of wet. But I survived, so that's good. It's gonna be kind of annoying getting everything out of here now. Um, yeah, hopefully I can get back to the interstate today and then we can get the heck out of this town. Basically an entire day of foot crushing walking later. All right, I'm back on the interstate. I had to walk uh, about nine miles from the uh, Elvis Museum to here. This one seems like it's going to be a bit slow, but I've been proven wrong before. So far, nothing. Been out, for, been out here for maybe 30, 45 minutes. And uh, a little worried about this coming in from the north. With the rain coming in, I had to make sure and set up my tent properly and early in order to avoid getting wet tonight. Well. I tried to record the process of me setting up my tent, but uh, it didn't really work. The uh, camera fell over immediately, but uh, there it is. It's uh, pretty much out in the open this time, but I guess I'm just hoping nobody cares. The sky is getting darker and darker and the wind is kicking up. Well, so far so good on staying dry, and it's raining pretty hard out there, but I mean, we got the rest of the night to go. All right, well, I survived the night. <clears throat> it wasn't too bad after all. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. I'm splitting these videos up into two, uh, two parts per week, 15 minutes each, hopefully, because uh, the last one, the 30-minute one, took me nine hours to upload, so I'm going to try and uh, reduce that a little bit. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so subscribe to the channel, um, Twitter, Instagram, uh, I now have TikTok as well, and then of course support the Patreon. Um, anything that gets cut from these episodes, which is kind of a lot at this point, um, is going to get put up on Patreon. So if you want to see all the extended, deleted scenes, bonus features, uh, go ahead and support me over there. Five dollars gets you all that. Ten dollars will get you into the Discord, um, and then there's more tiers beyond that where you can help vote on things. and and decide where I go and what I do, and uh, yeah, see you next week.